Welcome back everyone to Help Me Remember, where I'm gonna do my best to help you all remember a lot of important stuff for the USMLE Step 1 exam. This video is a continuation of the last video, A Few Bugs Forgotten. In this one, I'll make two sketches for the first two bugs, and a chart for the last two bugs, since I thought it was more efficient this way, but you guys can judge for yourselves. Anyways, let's start with this video's first bug, Ikenella corrodens, or like some people like to pronounce it, Ikenella corrodens. Anyways, the title of the sketch is going to be Eek, a Viking bit me. Now, I'm sure you figured out that there is a Viking in this sketch, but what's more is that the title should also help remind us that this bug is stored and transferred from our mouths when we bite someone. Anyways, once bitten and infected, the person will develop cellulitis. So it's possible to have this question come up in a question stem where a person got cellulitis after getting into a fight with someone who bit them. So now I'll go ahead and include in the sketch an arm being bitten to further reinforce this point. This bug also happens to be a gram negative bug, that's why I chose to add some red to the Viking's helmet and to also make the letters E, I, and K in the title red as well. Which is like an added bonus, since this also helps us to remember which bug this video was for. Lastly, before getting into the treatment for the bug, the other clue to look out for when it comes to recognizing this bug is that there could be a bleach-like odor present. So to help us remember that, I decided to include in this sketch a box of bleach whose fumes are driving the viking to be crazy enough to bite someone. Alright, well now it's time to figure out a way to help us remember the treatment for this infection. There are two drugs used to treat a patient infected with this bug. The first one being a third generation cephalosporin, such as ceftriaxone which will be represented by our three axes and the second drug being a fluoroquinolone, which will be represented by of course a flower which I will also make red for this sketch. And that is it for E. canella corrodens. Fast and simple. The second bug going to be covered in this video is going to be Bacteroides fragilis. The title of the sketch will be Backsteroids and Fragile Legs, which sounds pretty close to the actual name of the bug. And is the reason why in this sketch, there will be a buff guy small fragile legs and a big syringe of steroids sticking out of his back. Now this bug is anaerobic, so I included a gas mask, which I'm sure most of us have seen as a symbol for anaerobic bacteria in other videos out there. And since it has an antiphagocytic capsule, I'll include a symbol for that, a glass capsule covering the gas mask. This bug is also gram negative, so to help us remember that, some of the letters in the title will be read. By doing it this way, it will be easier to recall which bug this sketch is for, just like in the last video. Now, it's also important to note that the human colon is the reservoir for this bug, and so to represent that in this sketch, I will add the squiggly pink colored design on the bottom of this guy's shirt to remind us of the colon. Septicemia, peritonitis, and abdominal abscesses are the pathologies that arise when this bacteria spreads outside of the colon and into other parts of our abdomen, due to surgery, trauma, cancer, or bowel defects. So to represent this, I will add a bloody tear in this guy's shirt around his abdomen, which resulted from the careless use of tools left by the doctor who treated him. Lastly, we need to discuss treatment. If the infection is still within the abdominal area, then clindamycin, represented by the clean hand sign above the sink, or cefoxetin, represented by only two axes, since it's only a second generation cephalosporin, can be used. If the infection spreads above the region of the abdomen and into the thorax, then metronidazole can be used, which will be represented by the words metro employee, 
on this patient's back. By keeping in mind which symbol in the sketch is above the patient's abdomen and which two symbols are below from the patient's physical orientation, then remembering which drug is used when becomes easier. Okay, finally, sketches are done. The last two bugs should take almost no time at all since their information will be organized in the chart. These two bugs are Ehrlichia chaffiensis and Anaplasma phagocytophyllum. Both of these bugs are members of the same genus and therefore are Ehrlichia species. And infection with either of these bugs leads to Ehrlichiosis. Both bugs are gram-negative bacilli and obligate intracellular bacteria. Normally, the reservoir for both bugs are ticks and deer. However, anaplasma can also be found on mice. Now, transmission-wise, the first one is transmitted by the lone star tick, also known as amblyoma, while the second one is transmitted by the ixodes tick, which is why there are sometimes co-infections with other diseases which are also transmitted by the Ixodes tick. And to help remember these two ticks, I decided to put small little pictures, such as a star for the lone star tick, and a nice hat that reminds us of the Ixodes tick from videos you may have seen from other sources. Now it's also important to note that there is a difference in pathogenesis. While the first one infects monocytes and macrophages, and therefore causes monocytic leukiosis, the second one only infects neutrophils and therefore causes granulocytic ehrlichiosis. In both cases, the disease presents itself like Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, with additional findings of leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, and morulae, but without the usual bullseye rash. Which is why I made up this formula to help remind you all how to diagnose ehrlichiosis. I also advise you all to search for what morale look like, since a picture can't come up in a question stem and I couldn't find a free picture to use to avoid breaking copyright laws. Oh, and before we mention treatment, I decided to include, where appropriate, in case any of you found it helpful, crossed out bullseyes, mountains, a couple of small cages to help remind us that these bugs are obligate intracellular organisms, and also add some more red to help remind us that these are also gram-negative. Oh, I'm also going to add a tick since it's the most common reservoir and mode of transmission for both of these bugs. Though please note that the lone star tick looks a little bit different and has a small white spot on its back. Which makes it unique, so if you're interested, feel free to look up an example of it online. Okay, and now to wrap up, the treatment for ehrlichiosis is simply doxycycline, which will be of course represented by a wheel since again most of you have most likely seen the symbol for doxycycline to be some kind of wheel. Thanks again everyone for watching this video and I appreciate your patience. I know it took a while for me to finish and post making this video and I'm sorry for that. I did not know it was going to take this long and not to mention I had to try to balance this as well as some tutoring I've been doing and other things of course. That being said, I think I may have enough time to make one more video until I have to go and start doing my clinical rotations which of course won't leave me much time to connect these videos. Though I guess the positive of that is, if you do end up subscribing to this channel, you won't be bombarded very often with videos, nor will you be constantly spammed by my channel. So do please feel free to leave some feedback in the comments section below. I do appreciate any likes and criticism you guys share so that I can keep improving these videos, or at least the next one will hopefully be better than the last two. And again, who knows, maybe if these videos catch on and this channel gets more attention, then perhaps the big providers of educational resources that we most commonly rely on may just be interested enough to send me discounts which I can then share with all of you guys. So that said, thanks again until next time.